Welcome back to Quick Take Charge. I'm Tim Stanovec in New York. Well, earlier in the show, we broke down what exactly has been happening with GameStop. We talked to Sarah Ponsick for that. But this is such a crazy story, we are not going to leave it there. And that's why Bloomberg News editor Joe Weisenthal, a.k.a. The Stalwart on Twitter, is here with more on the stock that continues to shock. Joe, thanks for being here. Uh, okay, so GameStop up another 100% just a few minutes into the market open right now. How does this end? I don't know how it ends. I mean, you know, like the, the people on Reddit, they think they've discovered a uh, perpetual motion machine of sorts. Eventually, that gets exhausted. I mean, uh, look, you have some people who have been in this GameStop trade for a very long time. Some of them are sitting on huge gains. I mean, one of the sort of main drivers of this move whose handle we can't say on air He's uh, <laughs> traded like fifty million dollars, fifty thousand dollars into like thirty million. Eventually, you're going to have people who are going to like want to take profits in this. You also have some of the GameStop shorts covering that removes some of the potential kindling for this move that's out there. So you have people who that who may either take money off the table, remove some future buying power um, of sorts. But look, who knows where it's going to end? These are not huge names. The moves are huge. But the market caps are low, the floats are low, and so it doesn't take much when it becomes a national obsession to move uh, move these stocks to an incredible degree. What's the historical precedent for this? Because yesterday you wrote a little bit about the sort of corollary yeah. or perhaps differences in what we saw in the 1990s. Take us into that. Well, I mean, look, manias, short squeezes, covers, corners, they've been part of markets for since markets existed. So if people ever try to say, like, oh, this is some dangerous new era, or, like, try to say, like, the markets are being turned into a casino. I mean, they've been a casino from day one. That's a big part of how it works. There are some really big differences, though. I mean, look, this phenomenon of because of free options trading, you have the social media masses. They buy call options. That forces the options dealers to hedge their exposure by buying the underlying stock. That moves up. That pushes up the value of the calls. That causes them to reload. There are new dynamics that are always sort of novel each time, but the underlying idea of, like, Manias and squeezes and games is a history as old as time. Is course. it a little different now with the with zero commission trades, with Robinhood being able to do a lot of this from your phone? I do think the zero commission trades are a really interesting factor because what they essentially allow um, people to do is to create a lot of buying power through these call options more than the dollar amounts they have. So if you are just buying, um, you know, trading normal, like buying the equity, you're limited to uh, you know, how much cash you have. With call options, you could create a sort of synthetic demand. It's very risky, but it's like a form of leverage. So it creates uh, a situation in which small dollar accounts on their phone can really create a tremendous amount of upward pressure. And people have been talking about that phenomenon for a couple of years now. This is just sort of like what it's really building to. Okay, we talked to, right before the break, we, we talked a little bit about Elon Musk and the tweet that, that he sent yesterday. Just yeah. one word, Game Stonk, there it is, with a link to the subreddit Wall Street Bets. Um, Elon Musk doesn't have the best relationship or history, I, I think you could say, with the SEC. Yeah. I'm wondering if, is there's any potential for, is this kind of skirting rules, skirting regulation? Yeah. Can he get in trouble for this? I don't see it. I don't see the uh, legal issue. I mean, it would be, I don't know. I mean, in theory, I guess, not with him per se, but, you know, if you had someone lying or taking a position and something. But look, the history of uh, wealthy people talking about a position on TV, at ideas dinners, at conferences, they've done this a long time. It's not that new. It's just the medium that's different. What I find more interesting is you have these uh, billionaires or the richest person in the world who wants to be cool. <laughs> like, that's kind of the new phenomenon. Like, it's not enough to be the richest person in the world. He also has to be, like, on the right side of a Reddit trade. So it's like what people <laughs> really want is uh, the social currency or the cachet that comes with being part of the GameStop trade or talking about it or tweeting about it. That yeah. sort of is the phenomenon that seems kind of novel here. Yeah, we, we don't see Jeff Bezos tweeting much or, or the Waltons for, for that matter. Yeah, Warren Buffett's not active on Twitter. That will be the top. <laughs> I, if he gets on and starts tweeting about how he's long GameStop, 
<laughs> I will be confident that that's the time. <laughs> All right, there it is. I want to get your thoughts on AMC before we let you yeah. go, Joe. Uh, AMC stock up. Okay, let's see right here. I have it up on the Bloomberg. 247%. Um, that's, you know, significantly higher than when I last looked yeah. three minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, how are we seeing this sort of phenomenon spread to other stocks like AMC? I mean, AMC, think about yeah. this company, what it's been through over the last, you know, 10 months. Almost uh, had to declare bankruptcy. Yeah, I mean, look, there are some things that this has in common. I mean, you have this sort of, yes, the death of like physical um, establishments like video game stores or movie theaters, that's probably been oversold a little bit, that whole narrative. Then you have a heavily shorted, um, these stocks are heavily shorted, which as I mentioned before, that creates the raw kindling because shorts are potential buys. Every short has to get covered at some point. Uh, you have the small market cap, the low float. And so then you have, you know, it's similar, very similar narrative, similar short structure popular positions to bet against. And so huge potential for sort of like asymmetrical upside when uh, the sort of, when the long squeeze happens. All right, Bloomberg's Joe Weisenthal. Joe, this was a lot of fun. We got to get you back on here Anytime. more. All right, come back. Uh, thanks as always for your time, Joe. Good to see you.